Welcome to the Government News Brief for Monday, December 28, 2015. In the news, pensioners may soon be able to use their ID cards to collect their pensions, citizens urged to take precautionary measures in light of Zika outbreak in several countries, and country rainfall still below average. With these and other stories, I am Azim Khan. The Ministry of Public Health is urging all citizens to take necessary precautionary measures to avoid bitten by the Aedes aegypti mosquito in light of the occurrence of Zika. This illness has been recorded in several countries including neighboring Brazil. Here are the details. According to a statement released by the Ministry, in order to prevent the entry of the Zika virus into Guyana, persons should avoid unnecessary travel to places where the virus is known to be present. If they must travel to those areas, then all precautions must be taken. Symptoms of the Zika virus include fever, headache, joint and muscle pains, rash and sometimes swelling of the limbs. Some persons may also experience vomiting, diarrhea and abdominal pains. There is no vaccine to treat Zika. In order to control the spread of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, individuals should conduct systematic searches in and around their environment for any stored or exposed body of water and remove these sources of mosquito breeding grounds. Additionally, persons should clear their environs of unnecessary materials such as tires, punch holes in discarded containers, properly cover containers with drinking water, pour a little oil in contained water for domestic use, and change water regularly in vases, pet containers, and plant saucers, since these also attract vectors. The ministry is also advising that all pregnant women and children sleep under a mosquito net, since the Zika virus causes some abnormalities in developing fetuses. Natural substances, household insecticidal sprays, coils, candles, among other things, can assist in reducing the presence of mosquitoes around the home. Screening of windows, doors, and other openings can also aid in the reduction of mosquitoes in the home. For this government news brief, Shivani Rampasad reporting. The Ministry of Social Protection is looking at ways in which it can be of better service to the vulnerable groups, especially the elderly. One of the initiatives in the pipeline is to use information technology to eliminate pension books. The Ministry of Social Protection is seeking to put a system in place where pensioners will no longer have to go through the hassle of uplifting pension books. They will be able to receive their pensions using their identification cards. The system is expected to come in stream in 2016. Going forward, we're looking to move away from books in 2017 and to use information technology where persons will just present their identification cards. We're also looking at cleaning the list because when you look at the size of our population, when you look at the census that came out, um, something is wrong with the number of persons that are on our list as recipients of old age pensions, so we're going to work on that. We have already begun to talk about it and look at it, look at TORs and so on, to put out there to address that. Um, so three things will be computerized. The old age pension, the public assistance, and the allowance that is given to foster care parents. Meanwhile, those senior citizens who are disabled have been issued pension books for one year. The decision was taken to ensure that persons with disabilities do not have to come to the ministry twice a year to go have medical and then come to say I'm disabled. So they are being issued not a six months book, but they were issued books for one year. So that's the first thing we did. Since the coalition government took office in May, it increased the old age pension by 30%. Pensioners are now receiving $17,000. This was a 30% increase on the amount that the pensioners were receiving. Additionally, efforts were made to improve the services offered to the senior citizens at the various post offices by making the facilities more comfortable and creating more outlets so that persons can uplift their pensions in a timely manner. For this government news brief, Shivani Rampasad reporting. Immigration officers based at the various ports of entry of Guyana are expected to undergo training in customer service relations in the new year. This is as the Department of Citizenship moved to enhance its services to Guyanese, at home and abroad, and most importantly, visitors to our country. Shanta Gobadan reports. Immigration officers have been identified as the first line of interaction for persons arriving in Guyana. In this context, the Minister of Citizenship believes 
that the officers should be able to make visitors feel welcome. I don't ever feel that training is too much. I really feel that to access quality training and customer service relations would be of immense benefit to members of the immigration department. So that is an area I would be looking to follow um, in the new year. The minister, in outlining his plans for the future, said Guyanese everywhere can expect better service from the Department of Citizenship. I see removing the hassles as from, remo uh, from basic documents like board certificates and passports should not be surrounded by long lines, long waiting periods. Um, I would like to see that out of the door. The minister is optimistic that the e-governance project will greatly advance the work of the department. There are plans to move to online application and processing of passports and birth certificates. For the Government News Brief, I'm Shanti Gobadan reporting. Despite heavy intermittent showers across the country, overall rainfall is below traditional levels at this time of the year. Paul McAdam reports. The local rainfall level is still well below the 30-year average used as a reference. This is according to head of the local meteorological office, Garvin Cummings. The official told Gina that except for November, rainfall across Guyana has been far below the traditional levels. In Region 9, for example, rainfall has been very sparse for the year, Cummings said. He explained that this region, which has been experiencing drought-like conditions, will likely see the same trend continuing into the new year. It was explained that given the current levels of rainfall, this is expected to last until February of 2016. The overall rainfall is continuing to be below average until the next rainy season, which is expected to begin in May. Ghana is affected by the El Nino weather conditions, and this can result in heavy precipitation in some areas and drought-like conditions in the other extreme. Elsewhere in South America, areas in Paraguay, Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil are being hit by the worst flooding they've seen in some 50 years. Thus far, some 150,000 persons have been evacuated from several locations. In Guyana, a special committee has been set up to monitor the El Nino weather pattern and the areas affected by it. The committee aims to sensitize residents within the Rupnini area in particular to the adverse effects on their lives by this weather pattern. Local government elections is the first of a three-stage approach to repairing and rehabilitating the local government system. This is according to Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan. Shanta Gobadan reports. Communities Minister Ronald Bulkan has described the present local government system as damaged, degraded and dysfunctional. He said the first step to fixing the system is to have local government elections. This would allow Guyanese to democratically elect the councillors to manage their respective towns and neighbourhoods. The second of the three stages focuses on capacity building and institutional strengthening within these new councils when they come into being. What is going to happen is that following the elections of March 18th next year, these new councillors will by definition bring considerable enthusiasm and energy but they, many of them may be lacking the experience, experience and the capacity right. to properly discharge their responsibility. The Ministry, therefore, has this responsibility of providing training to both our local government officers, namely our town clerks, overseers, administrative personnel, etc., as well as to the councillors. It is this task that the Ministry is currently engaged in by putting together training manuals to be used for this purpose. Perhaps the most crucial of these steps is the third. This focuses on ensuring that the new councils receive adequate funding. Going forward, the Ministry is engaged in a comprehensive study of this issue where our councils will receive their money. And let me say this, there will be both a revaluation as well as a valuation of properties. And that exercise will start in the first half of 2016. Following that, it is Cabinet that will then have to pronounce as to what, if any, percentage of a council's budget will be provided by central government and how much will be self-generated. The administration's three-stage approach to repairing and rehabilitating the local government system 
arises out of a recognition that real regional development is essential for it to deliver on the promise of a good life for all Guyanese. Such regional development is, however, only possible in an environment of empowerment. With this Government News Brief, I'm Shanta Gubadan reporting. That has brought us to the end of the Government News Brief on Monday, December 28, 2015. You can view all our programs from our website. We are also on Facebook and YouTube. Remember to send us your guy and a nice photo. Here is ours. Mm -hmm.